Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com, continuing our Van Halen Marathon to honor the legend Eddie Van Halen um, with Little Dreamer today. So I, I figured out, it's like we've done a lot of really high energy Van Halen <laughs> um, the past few uh, lessons. So let's dial it back a bit. Let's just do some laid back Van Halen. So this one's great. Another one off of uh, Van Halen 1, which means I only got a couple songs left on Van Halen, Van Halen 1. So I'll be definitely finishing the album. Don't you worry. Um, that's uh, on my to-do list. Um, but anyway, so we're going to cover that one today. Uh, all the riffs, all the fills, the solo, everything. So let's jump into it. Before I do that though, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring the notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. And uh, real quick, check out my Guitar Academy. You'll see the link in the description. Um, that link gives you a free seven day trial to my academy containing all my guitar courses covering everything from complete beginner stuff to more advanced stuff on improvisation, ear training, uh, technique, guitar tone, you name it. So please go check it out. All right, so let's jump in here. Now I'm tuned down a half step. Um, so this E flat tuning here, I restring down a half step to match the record. And we're going to start with this main riff, which is also um, most of half of the chords. So it looks like this. All right, so what's going on there? So I'm at the uh, eighth fret here on the low E string. I'm going to hit that a couple times palm muted. Then to the 6th fret on the A, and then the 8th fret on the A. Now from there, um, I, you can just play it with just uh, your ring finger across the 8th fret of the D and the G string. That's the double soppy hits. I actually like to use two fingers. I can control the notes better. I can put a little vibrato on them easier and stuff. So however way you like to do it. And then after you hit that double stop there, let it ring a little bit, you come back down to the 8th fret there on the low E string. And hit it twice. So like this. Alright, so after that, let it ring for a second and then slide it down. Hit, hit, hit it, slide it down to 3. Then do the exact same thing you did here, but here. So... So that's three, then one, three on the A string. The three's on the D and the G. And back to the three on the low E. So it's the same thing, just shift it up. So. Now go back and just repeat that. Then we get to verse number one. Verse, the first verse is different than the other two. Um, it uses a shorter chord progression that's played twice. Uh, the later um, verses use um, a longer chord progression that's just played once. So this is what verse one sounds like, played twice. <laughs> Alright, so that's back here at the 8th fret on the low E string, kind of just chugging on that 8th note feel, kind of muted. Then you hit those double stops there at the 8th fret on the D and the G, and you slide that down. Down to the 3rd fret now, kind of the same thing there, just the 3rd fret. Then you can slide that until you, it's kind of just sliding it upward a little bit. You're going to go to this power chord here. You're first going to be playing the low, the sixth fret there on the low E string. And then you hit the uh, eighth fret on the A and the D together to, at the end of it. 
And then, same thing, but down at the uh, first fret. So do that again now. And repeat. All right, now we get to the first chorus. Now, the thing about Eddie when he's playing these choruses like he does in a lot of the, their songs um, is he'll put a different set of fills in each chorus. So this is chorus number one. Now, the rhythm guitar parts of each chorus is pretty much going to sound the same. Just the little fills in between are going to be the things that are going to change it up. So uh, we just got to do the full riff at first, and then the, for the remaining choruses, we can just cover the fills. So it looks like this for chorus one. <laughs> So that was that same lick that we did at the beginning. And then down to the first position. All right, so after you've done those two back to back, then you're going to do this new one. Kind of like slide that third fret down, and then you're going to grab the first fret on the low E string. So same rhythm, but we have that first fret hitting twice, then the fourth fret on the low E over to the first fret on the uh, A, so. And then, the double stops that you're gonna hit there are the first fret on the D and the G. And then back to, down to the first fret on the low E, so we have this. I like to kind of that last one, grab those last two hits there, when you go back to the low E, at the first fret, just grab it with your thumb if you can. All right, and then we have our first fill, which is this. So what he's doing is, is he's bending at the fifth fret on the G string. Release, pull off the four, and then hammer back on the five and do a, um, the bend again. So while he's doing that, he's adding a little bar dips. In. So. But really in the left hand, you're just All right, so you do that a few times. And then you end up like that, which is a third fret on the D. And then, I'm sorry, fifth fret on the D. Then roll over to the fifth fret on the A. Play four, three, and then slide down to two, so that's all on the A. And then back to the riff again. And then we're going to end this first chorus with the second fill here. So that's a harmonic at the 12th fret on the D to the 12th fret on the G. And then the 7th fret on the D to the 7th fret on the G. And then the 7th fret on the G again to the 5th fret on the G. There's a little little bar dive and return it there at the last harmonic. And then add some just vibrato with the bar. So we have this. All right, so then we're to verse number two. So this, uh, there's no fills in the verses. Um, verse two is now what the verses are gonna, this and the next verse are gonna be the same. Um, they are just kind of a longer progression played once. So it looks like this. All 
All right, so it starts with the same verse that we did before. So the first half of it is basically what we the same as verse one. But now here, instead of repeating what we just did, we're now going to take this up and move it to the fourth fret power chord and play that same rhythm off that. Then over to the sixth fret off the A string, that, that power chord. So this right here. Remember, you're hitting the, like, the low string, and then you're hitting the two top ones, the double stop. And then down to the sixth fret off the low E, that power chord, the B flat. And then you're going to end it with this G power chord, open G power chord. So that's playing the third fret on the low E, muting the A string with the bottom of that finger. Open D, open G, third fret on the uh, B string. And then as you listen to that ring, you can come up and you play, you pull off real quick, seven to five on the D. So from here, so the new chords are going to be there at the 4th fret, the low E, 6th fret of the A, 6th fret of low E, G power chord, and then we're back to the next chorus. Same riff, but just uh, uh, different fills. And that leads us to the solo there. So we're going to start here with uh, just the first fill. So that first fill, after you've played the, this chorus riff once, this is the second chorus now in the song. We have this. So it's a bend at the fifth fret on the, a whole side bend at the fifth fret on the G. Then you're going to play the sixth fret on the uh, B, roll over to the sixth fret on the high E. Down to the third fret on the high E, to the fourth fret on the B, and bend it up. So, like this. From there, you're gonna repeat starting from that sixth, that sixth fret on the B string, repeat everything you just did. So, like this. When you get that. That last bend, a little bit of uh, broader bar action. And then we're back to the riff again. And then this is the fill that leads into the chorus. So, so you kind of hear like an open A string in there. Then you slide into this fifth fret of the uh, D, play a third fret there. So fifth fret, fret so the D note, fifth fret of the A string, and then play three. Then slide into seven on the D, and play five. And then slide into nine of the, on the G string. So after this slide, you're gonna do this. You're gonna hammer on seven to nine, Pull back off to seven, slide to five, slide to four, and then a whole step at the fifth fret there on the G to end it. And that takes us to Eddie's solo. So let me play through Eddie's solo for you real quick, and then I'll show you how to play it note for note. So short but sweet, got some, still got some classic Eddie Licks in there, um, if you're familiar with his, his style of playing, which most of you are. So we're going to start here with this unison bend. 
So that's the eighth fret there on the um, high E string, eleventh fret on the B. So you, you pick those together and bend up the note on the high on the B string until it matches the one on the high E. String. At least you hope it does. And then we have. So this starts uh, with this high E string, eighth fret, and then you're gonna come out down to the roll over to the eighth fret on the B string, play eight, hammer on eleven, pull back off to that eight, and go over to eleven on the G. So that's the first time you see this. And then he goes to like uh, one of his classic blues pattern, blues scale patterns that he does. That kind of thing. Which is basically just a four note sequence. You're at the eighth fret on the high E, pull off 11 to eight on the B, and then that 11 on the G. And you just repeat those four notes. So he, 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 he repeats them about three times. So we have this. And then after that third time, so one more time, a little slower. When you get there that third time, then we get, we slow it down, we do some really kind of staccato playing. We play this eighth fret on the B string twice, kill it after each one, make it real staccato. And then 11, 10, 9, 8, 7 on G. So right there, you now grab the eighth fret there on the G string, a little bit of bar, and then pull off to the fifth fret, and then do the bar on that too. And then we go into this. So that's a slide into the twelfth fret on the G, and then play eleven on the B, thirteen, a whole set. whole step bend and then he bends it into a step and a half. All right, now we have uh, our next little kind of quick fast lick that he does. So it's very Eddie-esque too as well. Looks like this. All right, so right there, we're starting with this eighth fret on the B and to the 11th fret and then bend it up a whole step. And then we we have this uh, play eight kind of rake into the high E string eighth fret, then nine, eleven, pull off to nine. So this, and then we start the Eddie, very common for a thing that he'll do a lot in his playing. So that's going to be, after you get here, you go back to the 11th fret. You pull off 11 and 9 to 8, over, then pick 11 on the B string, and then go back up. So you pick then 8, hammer on 9, and then you're back at the top to repeat it. So we have that coming out. Kind of a thing. So we have. So. so after you've done it a few times, you take the note down, you get to that, you basically repeat it like two and a half times. And then you come down to the 11th fret on the B and do that pull off to 9 to 8 on the B string, over to 10 on the G, and then back to 8 on the B. And then 
We're now gonna play 10 on the G, pull off to nine, pull off to eight, slide down to seven. And then a couple of bar dips on it. All right, so we're getting to the end of the solo here. We have this next race. So this first one is the same thing that we did earlier. So sliding in that 12th fret on the G, then play 11, 13 on the B. Put it up a whole step, and then add another half step to that bend, so it's a step and a half bend. Then we, we start doing kind of the same. We slide into the 17th fret on the uh, G string and play 16, 18, and then bend up that uh, note to a whole step. So here's where it gets a little tricky. Now what's going on in the B string is you're playing a whole step, then release it to a half step, then back to a whole step, and back and forth between the two. And while you're doing that in between, you're grabbing the uh, that 18th fret there on the high E string. So in between it, you'll So how I like to do it is I like to hybrid pick it a little bit. That way I can mute the other note. So I can play the bend, whole step bend on the B string. And then when I, when I now pick that note on the high E with my middle finger, I can place the pick on the B string and let it. So now you hear that note. And then I'll release the note to a half step. It's hard to do slow. It's only like that are, So you gotta get kind of be in the in the feel of it. If you just kind of ruin your feel and just do it really slow, it's hard to keep it in tune because you can't listen to it. So that's what's going on there. He's rotating back and forth between the B and the high E string, but every time he plays the note on the B string, it's either a whole step bend or a half step bend. So, and that be the end of the solo. All right. So from there we get back to a ver the verse. Now this verse is the same as the second verse. So the one that's that longer progression done um, just one time. So the last, same as the last verse. And then we get to the next chorus, which has a different series of fills, which looks like this. And this chorus kind of ends the song here. But I'm just going to play the chorus one time through here so I can cover the fills. And then we'll talk a little bit about the last chorus, which got some kind of crazy whammy stuff in it too. So we have this. <laughs> So that first fill there, the first half of the chorus, is this. So that's starting at the third fret on the G string. Hammer five, pull back off the three, slide down to two. All right, and now we're gonna pick that again. Two, three on the G, then 5-0 on the D string. Then you're going to pull off 3-2 to two on the D, over to 3 on the A, back to 2 on the D. Then you're going to end it with 0-3-5 on the A string. Back to the riff. Then the second fill. So that's at the third fret on the high E string. Play that, let it ring for a second, and pull off, hammer on four, pull back off the three. Over to six on the B string, and back to that three on the high E. Then play 4-6 on the B, 3-4 on the B, 
And then to a bend at that fifth fret on the G string. And send a little whammy bar on it. All right, now, so that's really the normal length of the verse, but it's the last uh, uh, normal length of the chorus. So it's the last chorus, though, so it keeps going, and we have a different set of fills. So uh, kind of the, you know, there's multiple ways of doing this because there's so much kind of whammy bar and bending stuff. Uh, but up here at the 17th fret there, you kind of play the 17th on G, hammer on 19, and you bend up that 19th fret, and while you do it, you kind of pull up on the bar too. Then you're going to pick that note that's already pre-bent, release, and then bend it up even further with the bar. So you kind of kind of follow the melody on the record. So, it, so it's just kind of a little quick little whammy bar madness. You might not even care to get it exactly like he's doing it. And then we're going to end the track like this. So that's basically just that same riff, so it's kind of the second half of the chorus being played twice. And just stop when you get to those double stops there at the third fret, and roll the volume off. Play an F power chord here, so at the first fret of low G. And kind of slowly bring that volume in just a little bit, you don't have to do the full blast, but uh, that's about it. So it's a great track, really laid back, got some really cool Eddie stuff, got a really cool vibe about the song. Beautiful chorus with Michael Anthony with a soaring vocal, so it sounds really cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.